Welcome to the show. This is the Impulsive Podcast, the official Impulsive After Show. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to one of the hottest talk shows, the hottest after shows on YouTube, on the audio waves, and uh, welcome all you audio slaves. <laughs> I'm Ryan. My name's Zach. And, and the, we, we are, are the, the impulse, the world's famous greatest greatest pologists. And, and we are also, also brothers. brothers. And so we believe we that gives us an edge on the competition. competition. So, with that in mind, um, I hope everyone enjoys the latest episode of Impulsive with uh, the lovely guest, Brendan Schaub. Thank you so much, Brendan, for being on the show. You will be receiving a thank you letter in the mail shortly. Well, uh, this is, uh, we're recording this a couple days later, uh, so sorry to the people that have been waiting for it. We've been pretty busy. We're busy. We're actually taking time out of our busy schedule to do this for the fans. So, That's right, and we not, like, to, and we like to give a special shout out to our first hater. Um, oh, yeah. What's his name? Bobber. Freaking! I actually don't know his name. Was it like Bob something? Right? Wasn't it like Boblin? Let me hold on. Mm, no, I'm not gonna take a break. Okay. Well, we we had a hater. We actually I messaged Jim and see if he wanted to be on the next show. Um, and he's, we'll see what happens with that, but yeah, it feels good to have our first hater. We've yeah. kind of made it. Yeah. So a little message to you, who, whoever you are, fuck you. <laughs> but we look, we want your feedback. What do you, what did you, you know, we're trying to get better. So we I don't believe that you actually put in much more than maybe t 10 to 15 seconds into the show. And yeah. You didn't, maybe didn't realize what we're doing. I don't think you quite grasped the concept. Yeah. So, uh, so what did you think uh, about the latest episode, Brennan Schaub? Um, oh, freak. I thought it was, um, it was a fine episode. I think they were all kind of jacked up on this guest. They said it was their at the end of the show. They said it was their their best show yet. I thought. Yeah, which well, was really weird. I think I think they're gonna say that every single fucking show. I think though. What I think they were just like you said, they were really hyped up about asking questions. I think like other interviews, sometimes they were like struggling for what questions to ask. Yeah. Even though there were some crap questions in this, because Logan was immersed in the world of boxing for the last year or so, his whole head is just like, you know, training and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah, so. And Logan wants to be in the MMA. Brandon Schaub is an MMA dude, right? Yeah. Who converted to podcasting. Um and Logan's been trying to uh, get do an MMA fight with who was his name? You remember the name of that guy? Yeah, it was um. Sorry. CM Punk. CM Punk. Is that that's who he's challenged? That's who Logan said that he wants to fight him because I guess he's like the worst MMA fighter or something. Mm. And I know that he used to be. I think he was in WWE. For this is the time. first episode I didn't take notes while watching, and so you might know I took notes afterward. Um, but yeah, I think the conversation I said this, I thought maybe they thought it was such a good episode because the conversation was flowing pretty, pretty, pretty solid, like solidly, not flowing yeah. solidly. I don't know. Um, but I said that's because apparently he's had his own podcast for like five or six years, so he mm -hmm. kind of knows how to roll a conversation. Um, so I feel like they weren't digging for as many questions because he was also like asking them questions and I don't know. He just knows how to like flow. Um, do you think, uh, stuff, so they were, the whole clickbait of the episode was they both dated Haley. Chloe Bennett. Chloe Bennett. <laughs> yeah. Haley, I almost said Haley Baldwin, Haley Baldwin, which is like interchangeable almost. Same word. Um, but yeah, so... That was yeah. They they kicked the that off the episode with like uh, revealing that they're Eskimo brothers. Yeah, and Logan, 
the whole I don't know if this is worth talking about, but like, do you think they said that that Mike was the reason why Logan and um, Chloe broke up, and Logan's still like stuck on her, and oh. Mike's just keeps saying like she was a met, like he was they were it was bad, it was really bad. Yeah, he like, said like, do you feel like you guys both um, like dodged a disaster by getting out yeah. of that relationship? And you think I don't know. I think Mike's just like. Mike's just like a big jerk and you think you might just be trying to stir the pot and like stir drama and I think that could be part of it but on top of it I think he thinks he's like a funny jerk like the way um freaking what's that movie that I haven't seen uh, the superhero that's like a smart aleck oh, Ryan oh, Reynolds yeah yeah uh kick not kick ass um uh right People at home. What's his name? What's that? You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, my new theory is, which I was thinking about since last episode, I believe, is that Mike is being more of, like, the inappropriate, like, over-the-top, kind of, like, mildly offensive, like, douche role to make Logan seem a little bit more tame and a little bit to show more of that he should to show more that he has changed his like image and he's been pushing so hard for the fact that he like he wants to like start a family and he wants to like have this like slower like more like family oriented lifestyle and Mike's coming in bringing girls back you know saying he's gonna be single forever yeah. just the playing the party boy uh, part I guess almost making like you know a pair and and also i was comparing him to like the older figure of the group almost like a jason nash if you will uh referring to the david dobrik vlog squad yeah i'm still just trying to think of the name of that movie uh yeah um (laughs) he's wearing like a fucking maroon like suit right yeah um the second one is the name, and then two. Yeah, I exactly. That. It just came out with a sequel. But he thinks he's like a smart aleck, like, hee hee, tee hee. Yeah, that really <laughs> is it. Like, and, but really, it comes across, and I know it. And I've tried to, like, sometimes I think that whenever I say something mean, that I'm saying it in a fun, smart alecky way that's like that. But uh, it's coming across as just like he's just a jerk without, with like, just like an insensitive jerk. I guess the jokes have to be funny. If you want to be that guy, and his jokes aren't very good. Yeah, he's Are you trying, trying to find the name of that movie. Yeah, please uh, tell me. Um, like, Deadpool. Deadpool. I would have never thought of that. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He thinks he's freaking Deadpool. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I, he does have some good jokes. Um, I don't know. Let's. We, 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 we've got. Uh, some... I noticed you're wearing a sort of a sort of, kind of a unique sort of show here are you on a spiritual path yeah this is actually called uh tie-dye and um <laughs> thing about tie-dye is that like do you want me to get into this or like are you we could really get into this yeah man I, i'm actually spiritual myself oh <laughs> sick sick yeah no so like really it all started whenever my um my uh my pet lizard got really sick. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just think it's funny that, S- that Spencer's trying to steal this, steer the conversation into like spirituality and stuff. And um, I hope that he does that more. Um, Spencer had a couple of real dud questions, which were funny as hell, honestly. Um, but I, I still love Spencer. I, I don't. I. We know we've thrown a little shade on Mike. I like. I want us to say that right now that we we love Spencer and like we want to get spiritual with you. Yeah, I do like Spencer. His I like. Oh, they had the seating arrangement changed oh, yeah, today, they, and they, changed they the thought dynamic. that that would help Spencer talk more, and I don't think it did. But it didn't. But I, but he I, he did seem more inclined to want. He he was trying to ask questions, and he was just trying to word them. In a, like an intellectual way, and he was just kind of stumbling over his words a little bit, and like got a little bit lost in the sauce. But Brandon Shop kind of understood that, and he 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 kind of he followed through. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, a lot of talk about fighting. Like talks about my favorite quote, or one of my favorite quotes was when um, 
Mike was like, when the dude was like, yeah, there's no reason to get into MMA or boxing. You're just going to get hurt or something. And then uh, Mike was like, yeah, but you don't understand. When my man tastes, tasted blood, he just like, he was like, I'm a boxer now. I need to do this. My man's crazy. Yeah, he gets a taste of blood. He wants more. Um, yeah, I think, and then I think overall... I mean, kind of another guest that was like pretty impressed by Logan, and he seemed to. There's somebody working in the he, background. I mean, hey, you got to do work, son. <laughs> um, yep, yeah, he was very impressed by Logan, and was like, "Yeah, you could you doing shit your own way. Like you've kind of paved the way." They were talking about comparing themselves to traditional media stars, and how they have different. They don't have to go th jump through certain loops because they're doing shit all on their own. So, I don't know. He seemed he seemed like he really liked Logan and like respected respected the hustle and shit. So, yeah. Uh, do you think uh, you said we talked about this yesterday? They said that Jeff Logan's manager hates the show, impulsive, right. the whole idea of it. And you think you thought they that didn't that really say true. that. He they didn't say they hated every this. idea of it. Yeah, I thought I thought that he meant like that. He was like, I don't know, Logan. I don't think I'm po like a podcast is really the place where you need to be right now. Right, right. No, I think I believe that, but I don't know. We don't know if like Jeff specifically just hates the podcast or he was just hating on certain things. Maybe people they're interviewing or he probably doesn't like the idea of the podcast because it is unfiltered, mm -hmm. and he More doesn't. He maybe doesn't trust that they can get away with that squeaky clean without fucking up and even yeah. Brendan uh, Schaub said that yeah he's like you know you put out so many hours of content a week you're gonna say some fucking shit that you didn't mean to say yeah we were referring to the suicide forest which I think is gonna be right but I think they were also talking about in general having a podcast and overstepping yeah. somewhere and having to like be like oh fuck like mm -hmm. yeah do you think wherever that Logan's ever gonna stop talking about Suicide Forest his whole life probably not it's probably gonna come up on the pot like if this podcast goes for 10 more years I can see guests still bring it up in 10 years yeah because it was such a big thing yeah and it, I don't know it changed a lot of uh I was, the other thing I said yesterday, I don't know if this is true, but Logan keeps saying things like, people don't expect me to do this, but I'm that way. And yeah. like, we're different now. We're doing STD tests. We're crazy. We're actually going to show our real selves. He, <sighs> yeah, he's like, you know, people don't expect me to be, you know, having like intellectual conversation. They just, just okay, good morning, Logan. What's poppin'? Like, yeah. And it's funny. It's kind of annoying that he keeps saying that. Like, dude, just do it. You don't yeah. need to talk about it. I, I don't know if this is the right word for it, but I just, I had a, a light bulb yesterday. I said, I, I'm going to call it the Bob Saget effect. Because I feel like whenever I see Bob Saget re within the last 30 years, that he's just reacting to the public, expecting him to be the dad on Full House. And so everywhere he goes, he like makes a point of like being extra offensive, like saying lots of like, lots of swear words, just things that people are people like, whoa, oh, I didn't. And it just seems like his whole... They're like, wait, Danny Tanner? Yeah. And uh, what? And he's just like, yeah, you didn't expect me to be that, did you? You thought I was going to be the dad. Yeah. <laughs> Pussy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, okay, that for a while I could understand why he needed to do that. He needed to, like, react and, like, prove that that wasn't who he was. But I feel like at a certain point, yeah, you got, like... You, you, it's it's a it sucks that you're basically in a con he's in a constant state of reaction or proving people differently. Yeah, I mean, but it's more so the fact that. I mean, yeah, I guess it's a similar thing, but yeah, it's like his fans are like young ass kids, and mm -hmm. like those same young ass kids that love seeing him being like fucking crazy and dumb and like funny or whatever, don't are not going to connect with these conversations because they're adult conversations and, like, they don't necessarily re revolve around a fucking, you know, about putting a bunch of fucking dry ice in a fucking swimming pool. <laughs> you know? It's not like... Yeah. 
just a conversation, not, like clickbaiting, just a conversation is not like intriguing to a kid, I don't think. Yeah, this isn't a phase rug vlog. That's yeah, what you're saying. shout out to phase rug. <laughs> uh, that's all I really had to say about this app. Yeah, I was, um, yeah, I don't know. We need to create some kind of structure into our show as to, I don't know, we need to have. You want a reoccurring segment of some I, kind? I think we really need it. Com- I mean, I guess quote, best quote would be yeah. important, which you kind of... Usually I do take more notes, and so we have longer things to talk. I think I probably forgot about a bunch of stuff. I'm, I think I'm going to start doing like an LOL moment. I'm going to write that down. Because mm-hmm. there are there is usually one time throughout the podcast where I'm like, oh, that was pretty funny. Mm-hmm. Which, I hate to say, has been... Uh, Mike has really come through with some of those funnier jokes. Really? Maybe, yeah. Maybe just some, like, sarcastic comment. Which he he does... He really is the devil's advocate on the show. Um, But, yeah, you guys, if you like the show and if you want to get us on the Impulsive uh, Podcast, we'd love to. So uh, tweet at Logan, tweet at Mike, tweet at Spencer, Mm -hmm. film dispenser. We're in the LA area, so we can be on the set day of ready. Yeah, we can be there, uh, camera ready. Um, yeah, so give us a rating we're, review. We're, as, as, as in addition to Paulologists, we're also brand consultants and influencer consultants. So really we're kind of, there's no better person to help Logan transition from children's content, what he want, what he was perceived as to what he wants to be. Right. We want to be the new Mike once he, once, um, Mike leaves in uh, late January, early February from our prediction. January the last 22nd is mine. January 22nd was yours. February 3rd is mine. So but when those dates roll around, call us. Thanks to God. Thanks a lot, guys. Um, yeah. It was, uh, you, I mean, we didn't mention this. We're in person. This is not a Skype call. Uh, it's not going to be that normal. But when we are in together we'll do this let us know if you how you like this compared to the skype calls all right guys take it easy fam peace